Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our show. We call it Tournament Horse Racing. It's presented to you by Broke Guys Handicapping. I'm your host. My name is Rich Sharp, and here's what we've done. We've taken the horse racing calendar, and we've broken it up into four separate tournaments throughout the year. Each one of those tournaments consists of approximately 10 racing days, and that's actually what you're going to be watching tonight is one of those racing days. Uh, the racing days consist of four individual races, and each one of our horse players will go ahead and make a $2 win place, mythical win place bet in each one of those races. Whoever wins the most money wins that tournament racing day. And after 10 tournament racing days, whoever has won the most racing, or whoever has won the most money uh, during those racing days actually wins the tournament. So we are actually on our final tournament of the year. This one's called the Road to the Breeders' Cup. We've already had three that are in the books. Uh, we've got this one last one that's going. And I believe we are up to our fourth racing day. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the handicappers. We're missing one at this point in time. He'll probably join us in a little while. Um, but in no particular order, I'll start all the way over on the other side of the country. In Staten Island, New York, Ray Torado. How are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing good. Thanks, Rich. Joe, good to see you. I'll see you see in a while. Always nice to see you. It's been a good week. Um, you know, end of September, October's brewing, so it's... Yeah, the fall season's here. Yeah, for you, <laughs> for you, October has already arrived. For me and Joe, we're yes. enjoying oh, the so, last, yeah. last few hours <laughs> yeah. of September. All right, uh, speaking yeah. of Joe, moving all the way across the country, just a little bit to the south of me, he lives in Temecula, California. Ray, or Joe English, how are you? I'm good, Rich. British Cup is five or no? Six weeks away. I think you're at six weeks. So yeah, that's that's a good as that's a good sign that falls here as any good to see you guys go well. All right. And as I mentioned, we do have a fourth handicapper. His name is Steve Newsom. He is probably getting ready to join us just any minute now. So uh Joe and Ray, you guys let me know when he jumps in here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sharing my screen. I will take you back to last week. We had ourselves uh, a little bit of a barn burn last week. Actually, that's the racing form for this week over at Santa Anita. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up our tournament from last week, which was over in Ray's neck of the woods. It was uh, Parks. Parks racing. And I was there. For the Pennsylvania Derby, for the Cotillion Stakes. And, and that's what speaks for home field advantage because, as you see there, Ray manages to nose me out but just about four bucks uh, and takes the win uh, for that third tournament of the year. Uh, me and Ray will proudly say that we got the uh, the gallant bob of his generation, and that was Carmouche who paid the the, the big dollars there for us. Well, oh, uh, um, I got I got some big fans off that race. I tell you, yeah, people were looking over me when I was there, so they were, mm -hmm. they were very and, happy that I I told them I liked this horse and he won. So, and if you like, as far as our show is concerned, I imagine it, it was like me. I I was at work that day, but uh, in that finale, Ray. Uh, it was you and me going for second and third place. Um, and unfortunately, Zandon did manage to nose out Cyberknife there. Uh, and that was the difference. They gave you the $3.80 well, yeah. to give you the win there. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at our fourth quarter summary so far. We've had, uh, we've had three races so far. And uh, as you see there, uh, Ray's got two victories. Uh, on the season, I've got the other one, and Ray's got about a eight nine dollar advantage on me uh, going into today's event. You guys can still hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Just just making sure. Sometimes my headset gives me some some odd signals when it hears my iPhone coming in. So uh, that's what we're looking at uh, going into tonight's uh, races. We are at Santa Anita Racetrack. Uh, it'll be the awesome again stakes. There's the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. Actually, it'll be all stakes for the four races that we're looking at tonight. Next weekend, it will be Keeneland uh, on, on October the 8th. It is a special show for us, so you'll have a dual pick. Uh, we'll come on and we'll first do our, our normal race show, just like you're seeing tonight uh, from Keeneland. Um, and as you can see there, uh, that will be an all stakes pick four for us as well. And then we will come right back. So as soon as that show's over, we'll go ahead and wrap that one up. We'll come back. Uh, and each of us will go ahead and make a pick four selection in what we like to call pick four wars. Um, and as you say there, Aqueduct, Keeneland, and Santa Anita will be on tap for the four handicappers. Uh, and that's a separate tournament that goes on 
outside of what we like to call tournament horse racing. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to uh, tonight's card or tomorrow afternoon's card, if you like. Uh, something that I think Joe and I have attended on a couple of occasions I know together. Uh, and I think if I wasn't working on Saturdays, we might be even going tomorrow. It looks like it's a very nice card. Uh, it's at Santa Anita Racetrack in Arcadia, California. We're going to start off with race number six. They're going six furlongs on the main track. It is the Santa Anita Sprint Championship Stakes. It's a grade two. The purse is $200,000 for three-year-olds and upward. And your morning line favorite is in post number two. It's Forbidden Kingdom, trained by Richard Mandela and ridden by Juan Hernandez. Nine to five on the Santa Anita morning line. And speaking of my partner in crime down here, when I go to the track in Santa Anita, Joe English, you are up first here in the Santa Anita Sprint Championships. Who do you like? Uh, to be honest, Rich, I, <laughs> my method of handicapping today was uh, quite a bit <laughs> different. So I wouldn't necessarily say I like anybody. I'm just making selections at this point. Uh, the horse I'm, I'm on is the three, how be it. Obviously, he ran a much improved race last time out. For, and now he gets back with Mike Smith for a hot jockey trainer combination. Obviously, four of their last nine over the last 60 days. He has a good course record. And yes, he still needs to prove it against the big boys. He's shown that he can win from off the pace or he can win from on the pace uh, earlier in his allowance race at Santa Anita. Uh, he's got a decent enough local record, three wins, two other exact finishes out of 11 starts. So I'm just going to take the price for the hot connections. How be it? I'm going to send any of the spring championship, right? Um, it's a pretty decent race. So you got some, I see a lot of speed here in this race. And um, I'm going to go for a repeat. A horse that just came to this country from Chile. Toto Fino, number seven. Um, you know, he... He has some work to do against a uh, you know better class and stuff. And uh, oh, Steve is here, so should I know which? Oh, there we go. All right. Here. So, um, Tofino they came to country, raced a nine wins of one, the forty thousand optional claiming, and he won uh, pretty nicely. Um, he has had some fast races in Chile. Um, very fast, five furlongs. I mean, he's been working out pretty well. So I'm gonna go to him again. You know, he's got you know this is like a acid test for him. He has to prove it against the better horses here. Like Forbidden Kingdom, CC Rocket is, um, you know, and, um, you know, how all these horses here. So I go to him, you know, he's got speed, he's been outside, and hopefully, you know, he can break away and, you know, hold off any closes. So total freedom for me. Uh, Steve? Hey, hey, guys. How are you? Sorry, I'm late. No, welcome to the welcome in welcome. And, and, and folks, for those who are that, that is Steven Newsom. He is our fourth handicapper. He has just returned from the high school football game, and he is in time for race number six, which is the Santa Anita Sprint Championship Stakes. Uh, Joe, Joe's gone with the three, and Ray's gone with the seven. What say you, Steve? Well, I, I, you know what? I didn't look at I didn't look at your your sheet with the odds on it. And, I got it to you a little bit late. I apologize. Scan through my email. I'm trying to find the uh, I went for the link here, but I went with the two Forbidden Kingdom. So I don't know. I might have a bunch of favorites here on my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> eh, nine to five, probably the favorite, right? <laughs> uh, that would be the favorite. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not necessarily a shabby pick. Nine to five is not is not a bad pick. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, you might be able to win a couple of bucks with it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, Juan Hernandez doing doing pretty well. He's thirty three percent with sprints, so and two hundred races, so. Kind of like that number. Um, horse one is one, what, two out of his last three. Uh, should like the shorter distance, I think, and is one, uh, two or three is sin and need also. But yeah, so what are you, up to you now, Rich. It is. I, I'll, I'll come in last here. And unfortunately, yeah, it, if, if you watch this show, Probably about a month ago, a little bit more, you would have seen that Ray and I were both on Toto Dolfino that day. That day he paid eight to one, um, and it it actually uh, triggered some big numbers for me and Ray back in a, a previous tournament. It's Amador Sanchez. It's Umberto Raspoli, 
as you see there, uh, everything that you heard Ray say, you know, what Ray said. Um, and uh, uh, the horse has been nothing other than a wind machine. He's 10 for 15 in his lifetime. He's 5 for 7 in 2021 and perfect in 2022 so far, uh, 4 for 4. Uh, there's a lot to like here. Um, and the horse showed that he did like to win in that last race. Um, and uh, I thought he was worthy of another try here. His price gets cut in half from 8 to 1 down to 4 to 1. Uh, but I didn't think that was enough to chase me off, and I had a feeling it wasn't going to be enough to chase off Ray either because, again, <laughs> we both scored with this horse before. Uh, let's go ahead. And that's, just dirt, that's just dirty what they did to Hector Berrios. Why didn't he get them out back? That's, that's rude. Yeah, yeah, true, that's yeah, not, yeah. That's not quite fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get Rispley is, is talented and all, but Jesus. Stick with, the, stick with the guy that got you there. You think, wouldn't you? I mean, right. it's not like they're running in the derby. This, is, this isn't the derby. All right, here we go. We're going to look at race number seven here at Santa Anita Racetrack and uh, going on one of our favorite tracks here on uh, Terman Horse Racing. It was previously called Three Broke Guys Handicapping, and we always love this track. Uh, they're going six and a half furlongs on the hillside turf course. It is the Eddie D Stakes. It's a grade two. Purse is $200,000. Again, it's the downhill turf for three-year-olds and upward. And your morning line favorite is in post number four. That's Gregorian Chant, trained by Phil Diamato and ridden by Umberto Rispoli. Five to two on the Santa Anita morning line. And Ray, you're going to get to go ahead and go first on this one. All right. I'll be, I'll be staring at the favorite one stall over. <laughs> number six. Uh, so if I get this right, uh, Colt Hard for Phil D'Amato, Ramon that's the, Vasquez. That's the five. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the five. <laughs> yeah. oh, you know what the six comes from? Six to one. Okay, there we <laughs> go. Sorry, <laughs> okay. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, have a, I have a big six next to the number, so um, I get the PP here. So there's no. PP five. Number five, Colt Hard, Phil D'Amato. Um, He's won, won a few races, Santa Anita, two for six. Um, he's he's close. He likes to close here. So now this speed, this race has some speed going down the hill. Um, speed is very, very. Um, they're gonna go very fast, hopefully early. And you know, I think this horse will close and a little further distance, six and a half. Could be running five at Delmar, and he has to close at five. So, but um, it's a step up also in class. He. He ran in the grade three, ran in some allowance races, so um, yeah, he should get a good trip. He'll be in the mid-pack in the middle of the field, and, you know, how they go left and right and whatever they go. <laughs> that course is crazy, but it's a fun course, a fun race. He's, um, you know, 9 out of 14 in the money, so, or 10 out of 14, so he should get a good account of himself, so that's why I'm on court hard to fulfill the model. Uh, well, go Steve next. Okay, Steve. Hey, hey, I'm not on a favorite on this one, so I, I get I get the three Goliad. <clears throat> Let's see, why did I pick the three? Oh, Juan Hernandez again. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Again, I, I think I think the shorter distance is going to help the source. Uh, and uh, they had had two two strong workouts here in September, so I think. I think it's ready to go by Warfront. All right. Uh, I'm actually on the two. I'm just a little bit ahead of you there. I'm, I'm on Air Force Red, uh, whose sire was Air Force Blue, uh, who has turned out to be a really productive turf sire uh, so far across the country. Uh, and as you see there, the horse is three for five here at Santa Anita. Excuse me. My old cursor working for us here. So he's three for five. He's three for three um, at at this particular distance. Um, I thought it was interesting to note, and I thought, if I'm not mistaken, the horse is actually the little R right there. He's a Ridgeling um, and uh, trained by Leonard Powell and ridden by Victor Espinosa, yada, yada, yada. But uh, as far as those six and a half furlong races, uh, the good news for those of you who are going to go ahead and play the the, the horse for course angle. Uh, two of these races are, in fact, are on the, the recently reopened 
uh, Sandy Hillside Turf Course. So has had a couple of chances uh, at what Ray pointed out is, you know, going right, going left, going down, go across the dirt, and now go straight just mad as hell. Um, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a crazy kind of a race. Um, and the fact that this horse not only has experience at it, but if you look, those two races, uh, those are victories for Air Force Red as well. So um, I went with the two, Air Force Red. Uh, Rich, I'm with the five, Coltart as well. Uh, same as Ray, not embarrassed by Lieutenant Dan last time out. And Dan finished second in the British Cup Turf Sprint last year. Um, and the jockey trainer combination, even though it's only 17%, 50% in the money, which means six out of 12 in the money is pretty is pretty solid enough. Sometimes they don't always win. Just getting in the money is good enough in, in a lot of cases. So be the five. All right, here we go. Uh, we are going to go ahead and move along to the feature race on the day here at Santa Anita. Uh, and this is race number eight, and they're going a mile and an eighth on the main track. It is the Awesome Again Stakes. The grade one purse is $300,000. It's for three-year-olds and upward. And your morning line favorite is in post number four, Country Grammar, trained by Bal Baffert, ridden by Juan Hernandez, eight to five on the Santa Anita morning line. And Steve, you're up first. All right, uh, another one I'm not on the favorite, surprisingly. All right, I'm, uh, I, I'm on the two, uh, Royal Ship. Royal Ship, Royal Ship looks like gotten head-to-head with uh, Country Grammar a couple times, or a few times. They traded off. Royal Ships beat, beat Country Grammar a couple times. And and then last, the last race there, Flight Line took care of everybody. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I finished 26. Yeah, they got head to head three, yeah. three other times, though. Three or four, three or four other times there. So, yeah, it looks like looks like Royal Ship likes to likes to win every other race, at least over the last few races. So probably do. I do. Yeah, this is this is his turn. <laughs> and 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 Mike Smith with Rouse was like 37 percent. So I I hated to do it. I I ended up I ended up on the favorite. Um, Bob Baffert and Juan Hernandez are a nice little tidy 26% together. So uh, he's got yet another one of the top jockeys that kind of is in his little stable there. And the horse did finish a mere 19 lengths behind flight line as opposed to 26 lengths behind him, which is what Royal <laughs> Ship and the other ones did. Um, and Express Train and so on and so forth. Uh, and even though I don't like eight to five, and I'm hoping I get eight to five, by the way, because this is Santa Anita and this is Bob Baffert. This is his home track. Um, I'm not sure if I, um, I, I I couldn't find another horse that I could definitely zero in on, even though I liked Royal Ship and Express Train um, and, and uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. There's some good horses in this race, but I went ahead and ate the favorite. So I've got Country Grammar. I'll be quick. Um, I'm on express train and honestly, like I said, my methods tonight were a bit weird. If you really want to know about him, I'll let you know after the, after the show's over. Um, uh, he's eight of 11 in the exact at Santa Anita. I'm thinking the flight line experiment obviously did a lot to a lot of these horses. Nothing major. I, I said, just give me, just give me the seven. Really not a very strong opinion. All right, right. Um, well, what you failed to mention was that actually Country Grammar won by seven. So there's a loose horse somewhere in the next galaxy in that race. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's kind of the way I looked at it. it was like, Country hey, Grandma yeah. wins by seven. Yeah, he, he was uh, saying, you know what? I wrong. figured after a while, the rest of them just didn't give him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next galaxy. Um, now I'm on I'm on Express Train also. Um, he. He's um, has the you know grade one winters uh, and um, you know he's 
the last time he just, you know, he just never was able to make a run. So um, I think with these, he'll be a little more formidable. The figures are there. Um, you know, second race off the layoff from April. So, you know, it's just his race, you know, he, he could be competitive here. Um, so I'll go express train, you know. These, they, they take turns being each other. So it's maybe it's his turn this time. Um, I did like high connection a little bit, but you know, you'd have to run a super, super race with, you know, you know, and just blow out his, um, you know, just run his eyeballs out, you know, but you know, not to say he can't, but you know, I don't know. I just, I'll go get away. So. All right. We are going to finish up one more time on the hillside turf course. Uh, and they are, again, six and a half furlongs on the hillside turf. Uh, this is the Unzip Me Stakes. The purse is $85,000. Again, on the downhill turf, it's for Philly three-year-olds only. And your morning line favorite is in post five, Connie Swingle. Three to one on the San Diego morning line, trained by Phil D'Amato and written by Kyle Frey. And look at that. Calling my own number. I'm up first. Uh, and no, I'm I'm not on Connie Swingle uh, here. I'm not on the favorite. Uh, I'm down here on a little bit of a long shot. Uh, Tesere, uh, trained by Peter Miller and ridden by Hector Barrios that Joe already called out for getting snubbed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure you're going to see 12 to 1 on a horse that's got um, this kind of bold type on the page, but we will see. Um, I, I'm not usually crazy about this angle, cutting back from a little bit of the longer distances into the hillside turf course, but Pete Miller is uh, pretty good there, as you see, in the non-graded stakes. He's got 24% that he hits with those. Um, he does have no relationship whatsoever with Hector Berrios. They are over 6 so far together, um, but the horse was... Um, if you look down here, came over from Europe, which I always love, you know, the further east you go, the better as far as the turf horses are concerned. And then comes to California, breaks her maiden, and then wins the Jimmy Durante stakes as a two-year-old. Uh, comes right back in the three-year-old uh, and does not do so good, but that's a grade two, which is the San Clemente. And again, the Del Mar Oaks, those are quite a cut above uh, the unzip me stakes. So the horse is taking a significant drop in class here. And again, if you look over here, the competition was pretty steep, 13 horses, 12 horses, 11 horses. Not quite seeing that today. So I went ahead and went with Pesare, the eight. And uh, Joe? Yeah, give me the one. Brandon's my lawyer. Undefeated in turf sprints. Three life, three, three wins lifetime, three for three on, in turf sprints. Uh, he has enough speed that if he gets away well, he could take these all the way. Wire. And he won his debut going five furlongs on the grass from the rail. So I don't think the rail is really a big issue. For him. Give me the one. Brandon's my lawyer. Eight to one. Ray? Who's the trainer? Papa! <laughs> Papa said something. Papa right? Giorgio. No. There you go. Papa Giorgio. <laughs> pa Papa <Pop> Padromo. <laughs> Papa, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the number nine, uh, Island of Love. Oh, Phil DeMato mm -hmm. again. Uh, similar angle, cutting back in distance. Um, also, class relief. Um, why I picked him, we were, the first two races, he raced early, he ran sprints, and he won both of them. So maybe you know he's a sprinter. Um, definitely, he won a mile. So he, he would fit a second, fourth, and first in a mile. So, so stretch out to a mile and eight was you know, maybe not her game. But um, I, I'll take, you know, the cut back and we'll see what happens. Please. This is a race for three of Phillies only, so probably the last time they'll be racing against each other. Uh, you know, they get all the horses to face next year. So uh, Island of Love for me, for um, that um, Jersey Joe who relocated back to um, California. Bravo. Excuse me. So Steve. Yeah, well, this one I am on the on the fame favorite. Although I, I wrote her name down wrong, I put Connie Swiggle. That sounded better. <laughs> then when Rich pronounced the name, I was like, yeah, it doesn't sound as good. I like me some Connie <laughs> Swiggle. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> anyway, her horse is uh, undefeated on turf, undefeated at the distance, undefeated in Santa Anita. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, I like this horse. Yeah, besides that, what else you got? Yeah, yeah, what else, what, what, what else you want? What else you want? <laughs> Come beat me, it's my house. <laughs> She's gray. How's that? <laughs> gray horse. <laughs> you can see it nice on the track. All right. Take a real quick look, you guys, and just let me know if I got everybody's. I think I got everybody's right. Oh, man. I did like Rich's eight, too. That's all right. <laughs> Sounds like a drink we would have, right? Like a Tesere on the rocks. <laughs> Hey, next show we should pick two more. Everybody's that'd be fun. Yep. Okay. Got everybody correct? Yep. So five, right. seven, nine. Oh. Here we go. Box cars. How oh, good? Come on, back to you guys. Oh, so I missed the head last week. Go. Uh, Ray took the victory. He beat me out by about four dollars. And yeah, uh, okay. I believe I believe you finished in third, and that's actually the way we sit right now as well. Is Ray's in first? I'm in second. You're in third. I will tell anybody who's been watching and wondering about the the season ending stats. Those three, those same three horses, uh, me, Ray, and Steve, are all within just a few dollars of each other. Probably about thirty bucks would cover all three of us uh, going in these last few weeks. Well, everybody, that's uh, that's how we do it here on Tournament Horse Racing. That's kind of how we, we make our, our selections and we put together the weekly show. Uh, for Joe English and for Steve Newsom and for Ray Torado, uh, my name is Rich Sharp. Our show is called Tournament Horse Racing. It's presented to you by Broke Guys Handicapping. Good luck, everybody, and good night. Hi, Good night. Good night.